All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. I also want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you, elect, across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas branch, and I'm coming to you all with another lesson through the Holy Spirit. Lord's willing, this lesson here will be edifying and to the point. So as you see here in, uh, in, this, picture, in this picture here, I have this picture set as my thumbnail to this video, as you all can see. This is uh, an, an aerial view of the Euphrates River, what it previously looked like to what it looks like right now. Now, I ended up um, looking it up just to make sure it was actually real. And I found multiple sources, you know, so I'm going to just run with it through the spirit. So, again, hopefully this is edifying. But again, as you see here, a before and after, uh, excuse me, a before and after picture of what you see as the Euphrates River. And the previous picture is very full. But as you see, this picture here of today is very dry which the prophecies speak on the Euphrates River drying up. And you can read this here in the book of Revelation, the 16th chapter. And I'm going to read verse 12. And it says, And the sixth angel poured, poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, and the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Okay, so ultimately this is a sign of, of pending doom that's to come. Ultimately, World War III being fought over there in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. In the ancient Hebrew, that's pronounced Yahweh Shapat. Okay? But right here is going into a prophecy, going into the Euphrates rivers drying up. And as we see here, on top of other prophecies that are coming to pass, but as you see here, the Euphrates rivers is drying up. All right, and this is also um, this mentioned how this angel poured out his vial. So an angel had done this, and you can read it in Psalms 103. Matter of fact, I can get it. But here in the book of Psalms 103, it goes into how the Lord sent his angels to fulfill his judgments on the earth. Okay, and let's go on and read this here in the book of Psalms, chapter 103 and verse 20. And it says, Bless the Lord Yahweh, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, which are his angels, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless Yahweh the Lord, all his works and all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Okay? So you have angels that fulfill the will of the Lord on the planet earth. Whatever the case is, whether it's a prophecy coming to pass, whether it's a big event taking place, again, a prophecy that was spoken by the scriptures, or whether it's a king that's coming in power, whatever the case is, the angels of the Lord fulfill his will. Okay, it's all, everything's written from the beginning all the way into the end is written. And he sends his angels down here to prepare the way of everything that's happening. Okay, but you have angels that fulfill the will of the Lord. And this example here is going back to Revelation, the 16th chapter. What was just read pertaining to the Lord sending his angel to send a vial. Let's go back to it. All right. So this is back in what I just read here in Revelation chapter 16. And hold on. What verse did I leave off on? Verse 12, and the angel, the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. So that's what I wanted to get right there. All right. So what else stands out here? I know I said all that to say, because this is the key prophecy. That's why I wanted to hearken on it. But as you see here in this image, from what it looks like as the Euphrates rivers dry, you do have a part that does have a little water left, but you see the shape of it. It's shaped just like an omega symbol which I believe to be a sign that the Lord has shown as he shows many signs to give it, to give indicators that he's coming, that this place is at an end. 
And when you go into the omega, which is the last letter of the Greek alphabet, it's literally the end. All right? Literally the end. So I believe this is a clear sign to show us that the end is here. As it's written, all things. Hold on, let's get that in 2nd Ezra. The end is made manifest. And that's going to be in the book of 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter. In verse 5. For like as all is made in the world, hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. And how many more signs does the Lord have to show to show that he's getting ready to visit the earth? These are all key prophecies that you can only find in the Bible that's happening right now. The Quran doesn't give these prophecies. The uh, Menonetta. The Egyptian Book of the Dead. Any other documentation that all these other cultures hold dear to themselves and sacred can't go into the events that are happening right now. These prophecies are literally falling off the, pla the pages. Everything's playing out exactly how the Heavenly Father had ordained since the beginning. And we're seeing it right now. But you find that interesting right there in that picture that it's shaped like an Omega symbol. And I believe it to be real. I looked it up and it's multiple people talking about it right now. I mean, you know, I just found the information today. So I guess we'll see. But ultimately, the Euphrates River is drying up just as the scriptures say just as the prophecies say matter of fact i can really end it here so i touched upon the point i didn't intend on making this long at all just wanted to talk about this here briefly but you can read this scripture here in the book of isaiah the 42nd chapter and it's going into the coming of our lord so this is isaiah 42 and 14 and it says i have long time holding my peace i have been still and refrain myself now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once, which is going into the times that we're entering into right now, pertaining to biblical prophecy. Now let's continue in verse 15. And it says, I will make waste mountains and hills, which is literal, but also spiritual too, because mountains and hills, not only do they actually represent what they say, mountains and hills, but also they represent governments too. You have precepts within the Bible that might mention a mountain or a hill in particular, but it's really talking about a governing body. Case in point, Mount Zion. Mount Zion is actually a mount over in Israel, but you find numerous precepts within the Bible that refer to Mount Zion as being a people. Okay? Zion is synonymous for Israel, synonymous for Jerusalem, just Israel just in general. The nation of Israel, I'd rather say. All right. Which is going to be headed by Yahweh Shai, starting with Yahweh Shai all the way unto the elect. But that's an example. But again, going to this verse here, he says, I will make waste mountains and hills. And that's physically going to happen too. You also have the scriptures that goes into how the earth is going to reel to and fro like a drunken. So the earth is going to move. The foundation is going to be moved out of place when the Lord comes down to visit. But let's continue. It says, and dry up all their herbs, and I will make the rivers islands, and I will dry up the pools. Okay? And you get, again, you see this example here with the Euphrates River. Also, the Mississippi River over here in the States. That's also taking place. So this is the Lord executing his word, just as the prophecy said will come to pass. And again, you don't have any other forms of documentation or scripture that's written by any other of these cultures where these things are coming to pass. All right. You don't find that. That's why Isaiah 34 goes into reading the book of the Lord. All right. Seek from the book of the Lord and read. It says none shall want their made and none of these shall fail. Can't no other book compare to this. And can't no other prophecy within this book fail neither. It's all coming to pass. All right. And ultimately, you know, I want to say this too: that Omega symbol that you see on the screen, like I said, it's the last letter. But even our Lord Yahweh Shai is called the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. All right. So this is a very spiritual thing that's taking place. And if that's 
if that's really dried up to look like that, I mean, you can't you can't make this up. The Lord is definitely and clearly speaking right now. You know, so I'm going to end it off on that. I didn't want to make this long at all. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash, double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you elect across the four winds of this earth, pushing your lots, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom.